Namaste. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for Dharma Yoga. This is about a 90 minute practice. Please, as always, practice in accordance with your conditions. Remember the practice is an offering and imagine all creations experiencing this through you. So that is to say that if we practice in a way that brings us to a place of pain and suffering and anxiety, all creation is going to experience that through us. So be mindful and be conscious of what you're putting out there. So on that note, let's begin. Close the eyes, bring the attention within. At the moment of creation, God became part of all beings everywhere. Attune your mind to the supreme divine consciousness that is within and all around. everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice to our senses may we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other only offer peace love joy and compassion om shanti 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 peace 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 to make the practice even better than meditation, more meaningful and more powerful, renounce all the fruits of the practice. Dedicate them to something higher and greater than the satisfaction of your own needs and desires. Do it simply because it must be done for the benefit of all. Let's do the mantra for purification to purify the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. If you know it, do it with conviction and volume so it can be heard by all the subtle bodies within and all around. It's said that there are over 350,000 psychic receptors everywhere throughout. So when they're more, when they're purified, 
and open, you can realize more for yourself. The more you can realize for yourself, the more you can share with others. If you don't know it, just move your lips, pretend you're chanting through the voice of the guru, you derive all the benefits as though you're chanting it perfectly. Do it three times, each time in a single breath if you know it. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Tashtanga Toki Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantri Kaksham Sa Wa Ya Dihantra Ha Sajivi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Tashtanga Toki Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantri Kaksham Sa Wa Ya Dihantra Ha Sajivi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantri Kaksham Sa Wa Ya Dihantra Ha Sajivi Start the spiritual breathing in order to bring the divine with uh, to connect with the divine that's within. Bring your arms up over the head, palms slightly turned up. Throw on the fingertip, inhale down through the fingertips, down through the arms, into the heart, everything you need. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holding it all in the heart, hold the breath. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale out the fingertips, just the breath leaves. Everything that you pulled in stays within. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale again, down everything you need into the heart, attract it with your attention. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, all the attention at the heart center. Hold the breath there. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale out through the arms, out through the fingertips. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time, inhale down everything you need. The best of the best, down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold it all in the heart, hold the breath. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale up the arms. Everything you pulled in again stays within. Two, three, four. Just the breath is leaving. Six, seven, eight. Bring the arms down now. So now we'll do purifier pranayama. Imagine you all the purifying effects are being brought up through everywhere to the body, purifying everything up to the crown. Exhale, expel all the impurities out through the left side, through the nerve with the exhale. For this technique, remember that the main purifier, however, is the adherence to the ethical rules, first and foremost, ahimsa. Trying to act and comport yourself in a way that doesn't bring about pain and suffering to any being. So without that, that, that is the main purifier. Without that, there is no yoga, there's no path to self-realization, no success in meditation. For this technique, breathing in through both nostrils for four counts, hold in the breath for 12, apply the throat in the root lock, exhale up for eight through the left side. For the breath retention, when you're applying the locks, for the throat lock, you bring the chest up as you're inhaling so that when you bring your chin down on the chest, your back can stay straight. You try not to hunch the back. Keep the shoulders down, it's the chest lifts. And then when the chin comes down, also try to bring the tongue to root the mouth behind the teeth and the attention to the space between the eyebrows. Keep your attention fixed there. For the throat, for the root lock, pinch the perineum muscles together. Lift the pelvic floor, contract the buttocks. Imagine pushing up everything up and in towards the front of the spine and up towards the, the pelvic floor is coming up towards the navel. That's a root lock. Okay, so for the hands, left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb connected, other three fingers straight, the mudra consciousness on the left knee. The other hand, second and third fingers fold down as there's Vishnu Mudra. When we turn the palm towards us, there's no longer Vishnu Mudra. But we use the thumb for the right nostril, right ring finger for the left. The right hand always remember. So Let's begin. Step tall and straight. Exhale completely. Empty the lungs. Now inhale through both sides. Two, three, lift the chest. Four, hold the breath. Chin on the chest. Third eye attention. Two, three, four, five. Remember the throat and root lock. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the left side gradually. Two, release the locks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, 
Inhale through both sides of the nose. Two, three, expand the lungs, raise the chest. Four, hold the breath. Everything stops. All the attention at the space between the eyebrows, all the movements of the body, the mind, the activity, and the emotion frozen. Out through the left side slowly. Two, three, release the rocks again at the throat and move back. Five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale. Three, four, hold the breath for 12. Two more, inhale, three, four, fill up the lungs, hold the breath, three, four, try to keep your attention at the space in the eyebrows, ten, eleven, twelve, exhale, out through the left side, two, nice and evenly, four, Eight, one last time, inhale, three, four, hold the breath, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, exhale, up through the left side. moment to observe the state of the mind, even mind and emotions. Have no expectation, no attachment to the results. Just be the witness watching everything. So now we're going to do a few rounds of just the alternate nostril breathing, anuloma biloma, no breath retention, just a steady inhale and exhale. Remember to pause uh, between the inhale and exhales, close the nose completely before you exhale. So you're going from the left to the right, right to the left. We're also watching the movement of the breath in order to focus the mind. This helps improve the visualization, uh, the, the imagine, cultivate the imagination, and to also concentrate the mind as well. So it improves concentration. Inhale down through the left, towards rear of the spine, exhale, the breath comes back up. So you're always watching the movement of the breath like a wave. Okay, so I will indicate the movement of the breath, but you leave your hand on your left knee with your left hand. So let's begin. The same hand as always for the for the Baltic nostril breathing, thumb for the right nostril, right fingertip for the left as always. So breathe out completely. Close off the right side, inhale down to the left. Two, three, four, five. Expand along, six, seven, eight. Close the left side, open right back up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down to the right, nice and even. Inhale. Three, four, inflating the lungs. Six, seven, eight. Close the right, open left. Exhale, back up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down towards root of the spine on the inhale. To the left. Close left, open right, exhale. Down to the right, inhale. Exhale, left, back, back up. Inhale, left. As soon as you get used to, accustomed to the movement of the breath, do the technique, you can close your eyes and go in. Exhale, right. Just keep monitoring the movement of the breath. Down to the right. Exhale, left. Remember to close both nostrils fully before you exhale. Down, inhale. Close left 
this white tuxedo. Down through the right thing here. Down to the right. Exhale, left, back up. Down, left. Exhale, right. Down to the right. One more time, bring your down left. Exhale right, and it's very subtle. Down to the right. Up to the left. Right hand comes down to the right knee. Few moments again to observe the state of the body, mind, and emotions. It's a beautiful technique. You can do it at any point of the day. Try at least 12 rounds per sitting in order to really feel the effects of calmness of mind. It helps to remove craving, cravings. Cravings lead to attachments. Attachments lead to suffering. And when the mind is still and free of restlessness, it is more apt to meditation, more conducive to meditation. So now we will begin the asanas. Try to see God in all the forms. Try to see the divine essence that resides in each and every one. Let this practice be an offering to all beings everywhere. So now let's begin. Come to stand up. I'm going to start off with some warm-up techniques just to prepare the body for the practice. Stand the feet about 10 inches apart, weight from side to side. Roll the arms around the body, heels over the heavy weights. Feet all the way around you. Knees faster. And then just go as fast as you can. The arms heels over your head and continue anywhere along the body. And then start to slow it down. Come back with the hands on the hips, circle the head, the ears to the shoulders, the chin to the chest. You can also just do half circles if that's more if that's better for you. If you're going all the way around, the back legs to the top of the back, the chin to the chest. And then go in the other direction, around and around it goes. Good. And now bring the um, left foot forward, right arm, throw it back and continue to spin. If you have more mobility, spin faster to loosen up the joints. If you need support, bring the left hand across the chest to the front of the shoulder. And then go the other way. Imagine you're holding a weight of five pounds in your hand to make the arm swing more easily. And then bring the right foot forward, left arm. Go backwards to start. Make as though you're winding up just a little ball. And then go forward. You always move according to your condition. And then release. Now from here, bring your arms up over the head, take hold off the elbows, bend to the left, bounce, each bounce, try to come a little bit deeper into the bend. Go to the other side now, push the hips up towards the left, really stretch all along the left side of the body. Go 
to the other side again. Try not to make folds in the underside of the body of the waist. And then finally, again, change sides. Now come back to the center, little circles over the head. Head and neck and shoulders mostly moving at first. Getting larger and larger with the circles, the chest and the back coming into the movement. Trying to feel it in their waist. And if you feel apt to do so, you can take the whole torso around. Forms coming right across the feet, hinging down, fold your body in half. Coming all the way back up and then going out other direction. Starting again with little circles over the head. Press, keep pressing the elbows towards one another like you're trying to press the insides right together. Larger circles again, the chest and the upper back coming into the movement. And then finally, the whole torso, if you feel apt to do so, make like a windmill. Through these large circles in front of the body. And coming all the way back up. Exhale, release. Shake out the fingers, move the fingers very, very rapidly from side to side, like in no control over the heads. They're moving all by themselves. Up and down like the wings of hummingbird. Feel all the joints in the wrists and the fingers moving, being shaken. The next one, you have to tap into your inner child. It's like a sneezing line. So your eyes go wide, the eyes roll back in the, in the, into the head, and the tongue hangs out. So it looks looks like a line that's um, roaring, and, or, and it sounds like a line sneezing. So it looks like this. Okay, go ahead. side, swing the right leg back and forth. If you like, you can bring the left hand on the wall of your chair. Try to get your knee to the shoulder, leaning forward, roll the leg back. Try to imagine trying to get your toes to the back of the head. And then the other leg. Feels a little leg like a pendulum that went out of control. And then release. Bring the feet back together, the arms five sides of the body. Six counts to come up. Inhale, two, three. Start to lift up the heels with the palms. Two, three. Exhale, two, three. Down, two, three. Push and reach your toes. Inhale, come up. Lift up the heels. Engage the leg muscles and the core. Exhale, two, three. And down, two, three. Graceful movements. Inhale. Rise up. Turn the palms up. Charge the legs. Come all the way up off your heels. Exhale, two, three. And down, two, three. One more time, inhale, rise up, two, three, exhale, two, three, and down, two, three. Bring the chin back down on the chest in a gesture of humbleness. Stay in this humble mindset throughout the practice. Renounce all the fruits again. Do the practice because it must be done. Good, now we're gonna come to the front of the mat, Surya Namaskar. Hands to the heart, imagine the sun shining down on you. Infuse yourself with the light and warmth of the sun, representing the wisdom and the love of God that we pray for justice to all beings through our practice. Raise your arms up from the head, arch back. Pull the body down, bend knee to knee, keep your hands flat on the ground and chest on the thighs. Then the right foot back, lower down the knee, drop down to the seat. Come into a high plank. Lower down the knees, bring your feet back. Very slow at first, glide forward between the arms. Pull the elbows towards the side, the sides of the body. Turn the fingers out a little bit to allow you to come in through the arms a little bit more easily. 
take the seat back. You're also trying to pull forward towards you to him. And this helps propel the body forward with more power and ease. One more time, take the seat all the way back. Pull your body forward, press your nose to the ground, glide forward. Roll the shoulders back, tuck the neck out of the, uh, the neck, take the head back. Downward facing dog, lift the seat, allow the head to come down below the arms if you can. Press the belly towards the thighs and the chest down towards the ground. Now the right foot steps forward. If that's a difficult transition for you, you can lower the left knee down. Use your right hand to push the foot forward if it doesn't make it all the way. Push your hips all the way forward. And then left feet come, left foot comes into the delight, Uttanasana. Come right to standing, raise your hands up over the head. And come back home, head to the heart. Go up and back, engage the thighs and upper back, support you in a moment. Hold the body down, Uttanasana. Left foot back. Don't worry about the breath. Move the body, the breath will follow and deliver more power and ease and grace to the movements. All the way back, the feet behind the heels. Again, glide forward. Put yourself in a blind snake. Imitate it physically. Have the boundless range of motion like a serpent. Take the seat back. Glide forward. Tap into all the divine qualities. Imitate the form mentally as well. Be weaker and wise of the serpent. One more time. Take the seat back. Glide forward. Think of all the divine virtues. We are all divine manifestations of God. And more of the few times God says, always going to imitate the form in every way, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Now take the seat all the way from back. Again, head, heart falls towards the ground. The head comes down below the arms. Left foot steps towards the head. We deliver it mindful and quiet and graceful in the moments. Uttanasana. Imagine the guru within is watching and observing and wants you to deliver the best, the best um, offering to the guru so that they're pleased and they know that the students are enthusiastic. Come forward and down, Uttanasana. They're more inclined to share their knowledge if they sense the enthusiasm and the drive in the students. The right foot back. Balance the hot plank. Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. Come forward between your arms, if you can, if your, hip, when your hips come between your hands, lift the hips and knees away from the ground, upward facing dog. Stay here for a moment, bend the toes under, and then pulse, push the shoulders back. Look like a dog howling at the moon. Take all the folds out of the lower back, the lower and the back of the neck. This helps both the trunk out of the hips, the neck out of the shoulders. Now back, push into your hands with the seat, down the facing dog, pulse here as well. Try to get your belly against the thighs, your, your heart to come down. Try not to bend the arms. Look like a dog stretching its back. Look like a dog whose loyalty is its master. Good, now from here, the right foot forward to the hand, back knee down, feet together, Uttanasana. If your legs are, if you're flexible, your legs are straight, your seat in line with your heels. Come right to stand and raise your hands over the head. Come back home, head to heart. Go up and back again. Every movement reflecting devotion to the right or two, service, and humility. Take the head down. The left foot back. Lower down the knee, drop down to the seat. Come into the high plank. Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. Come right through into upper facing dog. Again, a little bit more. Opening the shoulders, you can bend the toes under. That's easier for you. Charge the legs, push. Dips the knees away from the ground. Back into Adho Mukha Lift the seat and then just sink your heart. Soften the heart in all ways. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. If you're flexible, try to get your forehead, your nose, maybe even your chin down to the ground. And now bring the left foot forward to the hands. Back knee down, drop down to the seat. Feet together, Uttanasana. Chest and the thighs again, head down. Come right to standing, arch back, and then come back home. Go up and back, reach up and back. Pull the body down, in half, hands to the ground, the right foot back. Into the Anjali Asana, into the high plank. Next transition, if you like, you can try it. Bring your seat back if you have a strength. You can come forward, bring your hands down, dropping your legs to the ground. Push, you can push your toes. Push the elbows in distance to the sides of the body. Upward facing dog. 
back into Adam with the Sanhasana. Otherwise, you do the knees, chest, form until you get there. Then the right foot steps forward to the hand. We're going to your condition. Feet together, open the mask now. Come right to standing, raise your arms over the head. And then, Anamasana. You always come back to the to the bottom of the heart. Raise your arms up, infuse every movement with unconditional love. All forms deserving of your love and attention. Your left foot back, rinse the plank. You are entering your toes into upward facing dog or cobra, modify as you need to. Then pull the elbows into the sides of the body, charge the legs, right through into upward facing dog. Right, then into, into up on downward facing dog. Then the left foot steps forward. Try to link the movements together like you're doing a divine dance to the motion. Uttanasana. Come right up, cross the Uttanasana, send a salute, hands back to the heart. Let's add one now. Raise your arms up, stretch the whole front of the body. Come down, bend your knees, your belly on your side. Your hands come joined together and pull them all the way up over your shoulders. If you can't join your hands, no worries. Bring the right foot back, lower down the knee. Drop down to the seat, that touch your fingers to the ground, bring your arms all the way up. Grab your hands and pull them all the way back. Crescent moon, lift up the chest. Rock your shoulders back, try to get a little bit deeper into the hips. Stretch the body out of the hips. Now come back into the high plank. Again, Ashtanga Namaskara, or whichever entry feels appropriate for your ability. Go to the edge of your potential every time, so you're always continually redefining the edge. And into Adho Mukha Savanasana, this time the right leg comes up immediately. Step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, drop down to the seat. Kapiyasana again, raise your hands up over the head, pull the arms all the way up and back. The side, maybe behind the ears, lift the chest. No pull to the lower back or the back of the neck. Stretch, lengthen. And to come forward, bend your, uh, lean forward into your front leg. Swing your hands behind the back without touching things to the ground if possible. Hold your breath. The left foot comes right up beside the leg. Uttanasana. Push your body into your legs, your chest on your knees, maybe kneeling in beyond the knees. Shoulders beside each, uh, beside the knees as well. Come right to standing, arch back. Hands back to the heart. Wherever you are is perfect. If you're trying your best, if you're practicing from your attention and offering, go up and back. Pull the body down. Bend your knees, your belly on your side, and push your body into your legs, the head plummeting towards the ground with just your palm away. Left foot back. Back knee down. Into Kapiyasana again. Stretch, radiate your inner light. Think of a shape of a crescent moon trying to imitate with your body. Reach back. Imagine index fingers going over the back toes. And come back. If you're not ready for it, however, just move according to condition, allow the body to warm up gradually according to your um, your condition. Pull your elbows into the sides of the body, right into upward facing dog. Back into Adamukasavanasana. Now bring the left leg up, three legged dog. Step the foot between the hands. Move the shoulders forward over the fingertips, lift like this, and let the big heavy thump. Drop your knee down, lower the seats right towards your front heel, copy us again, stretch. Use your arms to telescope the body out of the hips. Now coming forward, lean into your front leg, swing the hands behind the back, join the right foot to the left foot, Uttanasana, bow down. Come right to stand, you can jump over the head. And come back home. Do that same sequence again without stopping. Raise your arms up. Pull the body down. Bend your knees. Push your body into your legs. Send your seats over the heels if you can. Keep your chest to your sides. Right foot back. And then as your arms come up, pull your body up off the thighs. Bring your arms all the way back. Come back down. Into the high plank. If you want to try another transition, swing the left leg up. Come forward into your high plank. Keep your leg up. Pull the elbows into the side of the body so you can bring your chest down first. Also, you can just do the regular transition. Any of the ones we've explored before. Into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Right leg up. Step the foot between the hands. Back knee down. And come right up. You have to imagine the body moving with grace. Picture yourself in the practice you're trying to attain. With constant practice, 
and as a dissemination, you will arrive eventually. The hands together, the chest and the thighs, the head down. Come right up to standing, reach up over the head, and come back home. And again, arms up. Pull the body down in half. Every movement reflects a consciousness. This one is one of surrender and humility. Left foot back. Come up, open yourself up to divine grace. And come back down into high plank. And then again, back into your, oops, I think I forgot something. Um, I can't remember what leg it was. I think it was going to be the right leg up. Come forward into high plank, lower down. Sorry about that. Chest between your hands, perhaps. Right into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Sanyamasana. And the left leg up, three legged dog, and step the foot between the hands. Back knee down, all the movements there quietly, gracefully. Reach up and back. Be like a shapeshifter moving to the forms effortlessly, fluidly, like you see yourself moving in your dreams. The feet come together, Uttanasana. Bow down, the throat humble. Come right to standing, raise your hands up overhead, arch back. And then come back home. Third. So stay here for a moment. Round the heart. Inhale, the left heart up to the crown. Hold the breath, imagine all the love going out to all beings everywhere. Exhale back down to the heart, remain established in divine love towards all beings everywhere. And release. Okay, so now we'll continue with some sequences, balances, pose sequences. Starting off at the back of the mat, hands together if you can, otherwise you can take your arms up to the side, a little bit easier to balance with your arms out. If you can, interlace your fingers, open up the palms, and bring your left foot forward. Lean into the front leg and bring the right leg up. Make your body look like a letter T. Straight lines from the head to the toes. Now, if you want, you can bend your left knee. Bring your body down a little bit lower. The head comes down lower, but the right leg comes up higher. Pull your hands up over your head. Arch your back if you can, curve your spine, pull your shoulders back. Good, now from here, bring the left hand, release the head, bring the left hand down, turn to the right, Abhijandrasana. Open up fully to the right, take your time. If you rush, you might lose your balance. If you want here, you can see if you take your left hand to the heart, or if you just have on the ground. Make sure your hip is over the front, the, the right foot, and line the heel. Maybe your right hand comes down to your left as well if you like. Oops. Whatever happens, be unconcerned. Just do your best. No attachment to the result. And then bring the left hand down. The right hand comes, right foot comes back down. Good. So now, try it on the other side. So turn this way so you can see. The right foot forward, hands behind the back, bend your right knee, and then see if you can send your left foot up. Now come with the head like you're lying on the table. Open up the palms actually, bend at your wrists. You can stay there or die. Down, the head closer above the height of the knee. The left foot comes up higher. And then arch your back. If you have your arms out, imagine you're a gliding eagle soaring on the surface of the ocean. Become what you see in your imagination. And now bring the right hand down. Abhijandrasana. Turn to your left. Point the left toes. And bring the left arm up. Get a form, but try not to get too attached to the practice, otherwise that makes the mind restless. You're always wondering when you're going to attain the postures. It's not about that, it's about the offering. So now if you want, you can again see if you can take your right hand up off the ground to the heart. Maybe your left hand comes down onto the right as well. down, left foot back down, come back up. Try it 
tried to buy, turn the palms forward, close the eyes, inhale, it's the spine. Everything you need, the best, the best. Send it all the way up to the crown. Exhale, send it all the way throughout the body. Send it out to all the uterus at the same time. Okay, so now ballet pose. Step standing on your left foot. Take the right foot by the heel from the inside, the thumb behind the heel, bring the leg out to the side. So you try to get your toes and fingers in the same line, it might look like the letter T again, or more like a Y shape. With the leg higher, lean to your left a little bit, fingers and toes try to stay in the same line. Embody the magnificence and the grace of the dancer. Remember, we imitate them physically, mentally, and spiritually in all the forms. Now here, if you can, hold the breath. I'm gonna let go of the foot, try not to drop the foot when you do it though. So engage your leg muscles, let go of the foot slowly, not too fast. Good, and now bring your knee in front of the body. Push your knee in towards your belly, your belly towards your knee, lean back. If you want, you can stay here or you can extend your leg. Bring your hands to the heart, lean back, or you can lie on the table on your back. Good. You can take one side to the side, but I dropped that move here. So try again. One side to the side. Okay, so pose, come back. So you have to look towards your toes, really engage your core muscles. Imagine all the abdomen muscles are just pushing in towards the belly button. Try again on the other side. On the right foot. Now, take the left foot and bring it up. Whatever height is suitable for your flexibility, maybe about the height of the shoulder or maybe higher. Lean to the right. Push through the base of the toes, help with the balance. Look up if you can and find the balance. Again, if you're able to, hold the breath, keep the leg muscles engaged so when you let go of the foot, it doesn't drop. Now bring your knee in towards the body. The right toes are turned out a little bit, bend your right knee, lean back, shoulders fall back. You can stay here or you can see if you can extend your leg, concentrate. Bring your hands to the heart, lean back a little bit, tuck your chin in, knee to the arms out. And then back down. Pose requires angry determination. So now, charge the body again. Bring the palms forward. Inhale, lights come. Imagine the lights coming into the body from all around, up the spine to the crown. Exhale, send it everywhere throughout your being. Be illuminated from within. Keep radiating your light to all beings. Now, dancer, standing on your left foot, bring the right knee up. It will be easier to take it from the front and when you, so you can pull it back more easily. Left arm up. Bend your left knee, take more weight into your left foot and then push the foot back, the right foot into your hands and then straighten up the left leg. You can stay here. If you have good balance, you can take your left hand to the foot. Maybe come up a little bit, pull the heel in towards the seat so that you can take the foot more easily and then push the foot out. Wherever you are is perfect. Remember, if you're trying your best. Good. And then release. Bring the foot down. Try it on the other side now. Bring the left foot up. Or left knee up. Take hold of the foot and pull it right back behind your seat. Right arm up. If this is where you're at, you stay here. Otherwise, you bend your knee. Take more weight into your right foot. And then, whoops, sorry, sorry. <laughs> let's try it again. Take the foot into your hand and then pull it back. Push the foot out and then straighten out your right leg. You can stay in this form here. Keep your chest up or come up a little bit. Take hold of the foot with both hands and push it all the way up and back. Try to hug your toes about the height of the head. Shoulders back. Left your foot again, helps with balance. Pose. 
Whatever happens, just dance this. Just a gunas that are playing, so just keep on being, trying to stay in the same mindset. Unbothered, undisturbed, unjudging. Charging, breathing again. Inhale, bus, bus into the body. Right up to the spine, to the crown. Exhale. Take it everywhere throughout the body. Send out to all beings. Now from here, we're standing in the middle of the mat. Bring the fingertips on the line with the elbows back to the shoulders. Jump or walk your feet apart. We're going to go to the left. Lean forward a little bit. If you're flexible, get a little bit deeper into the hips. You knee over the toes. Embody the power, the courage, and the determination of a warrior. Always ready to serve. From here, Pasha Kanasana, depending where you are, if your hips are low enough, you can take your left hand onto the ground, the right hand over the head. If you're higher up, you can just rest your left arm on the knee. But make sure the right hip is not jutting up. Straight line from the foot all the way to the hand. Take your hand, your gaze up to the palm above you. You can stay in this form. You want to take other forms, you can. The right hand behind the back. You land on the thigh, roll the thigh outwards. This might help to um, get a little bit more open into your hip. Your right shoulder goes back. If you're more flexible, left shoulder can come all the way, a little bit low, below the line of the knee. Left arm goes underneath the leg, right arm behind the back. Catch your wrist, pull on the arm. Pull the right shoulder back. Now keep going further. Push your left leg straight. Head close to the ground. Now from here, release, bring hands down wherever you are, turn to the front, back knee is yucky lifted, raise your right arm up, Padi Vita Pashkanasana, bend the toe knee, or um, orient the toe knee towards the right, you can take the arm all the way to the right arm, all the way to the left, the outside of the knee, right, shoulder against the outside of the knee, left hand push into your right, so you push down, left hand into the right, See how the belly comes high in the thigh. And then you have more room for the body to turn towards the left. Maybe even facing up eventually. Your chest and face are turned up. If it's too much, bring the right knee down to the ground. Do it from here. If you want to take a bind, you want to get the armpit on the outside of the knee, your elbow comes close to the seat, push your seat back, and use your right hand to slide the right arm up into the seat. Your elbow has to be in a space underneath the leg. The left arm goes over the back. Trap your hands together. Pull on the arm again, left shoulder back. Then you can take the knee up off the ground. You can always do this with your leg, your knee up off the ground as well. Do according to your abilities. Break the pose, come down. Now the hands are on the inside of the left foot. Left foot moves out to the edge of the mat. Glide back and forth. Try to get your hips to come down lower and lower with each pass. Feel as though they're made of lead. Push one more time to the back foot. Lower the knee down. See if you can drop down. If your hips are low enough, you can come right onto the forearm. Roll back to your left. Make sure your knee's not falling out like this or, or this is happening. Your shin is vertical. Knee stays close to shoulder. And then you continue to go down. If you're flexible, you're hips are on the ground, you can bring your left arm to the outside and rest your belly and your chest on the ground. Be like a lizard just lying in the sun, sunning itself. If you're flat, you can take your arms up to the side or maybe the bind. Left arm goes over the foot, from the outside underneath the knee, and you join your hands over your back. If you're not, if you're not close to the ground, just keep stay on your hands, keep on pushing hips down. Think of a cobra pose. The more you lengthen the board, the body will come closer to the ground. Eventually, the back will go lower than the knees, the left knee. One more breath. Extend, merge the form. Be like a lizard, just sunning it, just being very still. Now come back. Bring your left hip back. Right over in line, um, in line with the back knee, lift the toes up on the back foot. Adha Hanumanasana. Bend, uh, not really bend, but hinge forward, try to get your belly on your thigh. Imagine your chest is only on the knee. 
the front fold of the form to come down, top of the head almost coming right to the hips. If this is easy for you, you can go right to Hanumanasana from here. Push your hips all the way forward. Slide your left foot forward. Bend the toes under on the back foot. And here, just pulse. Don't go too hard, too fast. Be mindful again of your press, of your of your groin muscles so you don't uh, overstretch them. And if you can get all the way down and sit, and bring hands to the heart or up to represent that leap, that great leap that Hanuman took to right across the island of Sri Lanka. It's much, it's as much a leap of faith as a physical leap. Be courageous, devoted, and faithful like Hanuman. Okay, now from here, release. Lean forward, press into your fingertips. Bend the toes under back foot and drag the left foot back as much as you need to to come back into standing. Turn on your feet, come to the long edge of the mat. And release. Long edge of the mat now, going to the other side now. If you need to turn around 180 degrees, you can still see the screen. Then do it now. Bend into your right knee. Be powerful like a warrior. The qualities are already within. You just have to turn them on. Make sure your back arms are not dropping down. Make sure the shoulders and the fingertips stay in line. Now from here, Pashukanasana. Again, this variation with your arm on the leg. Maybe even half bind with your hand behind the back and the hand comes to your thigh. If you're more flexible, your hips go to the ground, the right hand behind on inside the foot. You can keep the left arm over the head or take a bind. Even half bind is possible here. If you have the full bind, pull on the left arm, take hold of the left wrist, pull the left arm back so the left shoulder goes back. So if you're hunching forward like this, Really pull on the arm so your body, your left shoulder can go back. And then maybe press the right into the right foot, straighten up the right leg. Down the triangle, push the left hip up, try to get your left leg straight. Now from here, bend the palms, looking forward, turn on the back foot, lift the heel. Come right up this way. Bend it, um, turn the knee and the toes towards the left. Push it out of the way so you have lots of room for the left arm to come down. Try to get your armpit on the outside of the knee. This is especially important if you want to take the bind. Now you don't stay here. You push your right hand into your left until the body comes higher than the thigh. Send your chest comes to your thumbs and roll the right shoulder all the way back. Make sure the back, you're pushing out the heel of the back foot. If you're taking the bind, a little bit even sometimes easier to do it from here as long as you can take keep the balance. So you have more room. There's not you're not stressing by the knee. So the arm can go underneath, there's more space, and then the right arm goes over the back. Take hold of the hands, join the hands together, pull on the right arm, take the right shoulder back, turn the face and chest. Modify as you need to, but bring the left knee down or stay if you have some Anjali Mudra. Break the pose now. Bring the hands to the inside of, of the left leg foot and the foot out. Again, go back and forth. Push you to reach your toes. Feels when the hips are made of lead, very, very heavy or attracted to the ground by a large magnet. And then push back your left foot one more time, lower the knee down, flatten up the toes, and start to make your way down. Remember, try to keep your knee close to the shoulder, don't let it fall out to the outside, or the right foot to slide out. Try to have both sides of your hips evenly on the ground. And keep on telescoping your body forward until the belly comes down. The hips come down, the belly and the chest will follow more easily. Here you can take whatever variation you like. If you're flat on the ground and flexible, go ahead. And go the right arm underneath the leg on the outside and then over your back. Every chance you get, go into, go inward. Meditate in all the poses. Now break your 
forward, press back into your hands, come back, and then from here, Adho Hanumanasana. Pull the toes up, and then sink your body down onto your front leg. Try to get your knee and your chest to go beyond your knee. Telescope your head towards your front foot. And then something go deeper. So hinge your feet forward. And then if you like, otherwise you can stay in the other hand asana. If you really can, push your hips forward. Send your foot forward, but don't stay. If uh, stay, try to stay upright by your feet, your fingers alongside your hips. So just bounce a little bit. Eventually, maybe your legs will go down. Don't for yourself. Again, it's a place of pain or suffering. Think about what you're offering. Cool body up out of the hips. There's always an expression of service, of surrender to divine service. Now from here, lean forward, press into your fingertips, bend the toes under, and drag the right foot back. So from here, bring the knees back together. So here, if you can, you can sit, go into Sutta Vinasana, go all the way onto your back. If you can't go all the way, you just sit on your heels and go as far back as you can. Your head's coming back, trying to soften the knees here. If you're able to, you sit between your heels. You make your way down, maybe on your forearms. Place your hands on the feet, or if you can, all the way down, try to bring your thighs together. Take all the opposite elbows over the back, over the head, take a deep breath in. Exhale, let the whole back of the body sag into the ground if you're on the ground. Um, if you're sitting upright, you can just relax, let go of all tension. Remember, the practice is about between the strength and the drive, the effort with the softness and serenity. They all have their place in the practice, all for all. Now, from here, come back up. Put your hands into your feet if you're down on your back, tuck your chin in, peel your shoulders up off the mat, and come back up. Okay. So from here, bring your left foot forward, Kaviyasana. Plank your seat all the way forward. Hands on the seat, push into your seat, pull down with the heels and palms, and lift. Push the rib basket up to your fingertips. Try to create, uh, stretch the skin, smooth underneath the head, so there's no wiggles in the lower back. Back, the drop, head drops back. So here, you take your hands together, Kali Mudra, and bring your arms back. Try to get the index finger to open the toes. Stretch. This is why we work with down the kids and dogs. If you can, you can bend your hands back behind your neck. Pull the foot up. You might be able to find the foot. Make your steps. And you can take the foot in your hands and just stay there. You can eventually take your hands up. Too much, keep your hands on the ground. You have your seat force, your feet can touch the ground. You can use the thumb and the right back of the knee, the hands around, uh, other fingers around the outside the knee to guide your foot closer to the head. Okay, so just working the hinge a little bit to direct the foot. If you know the variations or modifications, you can go slow. And then break the pose. From here, slide your left foot all the way back. Preparing for Vasisthasana. You can stay here. Your right hand in front may move a little bit more to the right, uh, to the left, so it's in front, um, in front of your nose, a little bit in front of the shoulder. You can stay here or take your right knee up off the ground, full pose. Push your hips forward. You can here, from here, lift your left foot up if you like. Come back and then go on the other, go towards plank. Right foot forward now. Back knee down, drop down to the seat. Once again in Kapyasana, pull the seat down, push the heart, uh, the rib basket up. Create more space in your lower back. Stretch. Good. Again, 
You can stay there or you can take your hands up and tap the asana. Pull your arms back. Visualize the index fingers going into plateau. It doesn't matter if you don't get there. Just keep imagining. Again, if you want, you can flexibly take your hands back behind your head. Take, bend your left knee up so you can find the foot. Gently tip your head back. Or you might allow the head might just rest in the foot. Once you take your hands up, all these are building blocks. Otherwise, you take your thumb to your back of the knee, wrap your fingers around the outside of the knee, and just push the guide the foot towards the head. All sorts of tricks that you learn from repetition. Now break the pose from here into um, Bhakti Sasana modified version start. So right foot goes back behind the knee in the same line. You can stay here or you can bring the left knee up off the ground. We can keep our ankles crossed, it's a little bit more stable. Water stays strong, and we can raise the right leg up if you want. The left foot comes back down into high plank. Lower the knees down. Pull the feet back onto your heels and come up. Right arm up. One pose merging to the other, so no as transitions are smooth. Bring the left hand to the elbow, right elbow, and push the elbow all the way up and back. Hand comes down the center of the back. You can use shoulder blades in the left arm if you can. You can come up the back, join your hands together. Pull the hands down, further down. Tip your head up. Try to get your elbows in the same line, behind the center of the head, not out, not on either side of the head. Try to have it right in the center in the back of the head. Push into the back of the heart. Too much to join your hands together, just keep your left hand on your elbow. Tuck your chin in, release, and from here, other side. Left arm up, take hold of the elbow with the right hand and push it all the way up and back. Anchor it in place with the back of the head, and then your hat to the right arm can come down and then up the back. Once you have the hands, pull the right elbow in. Try to get your elbows in the same line, head in between. Lean back a little bit, pull the hands down, further down towards the lower back. Every pose, we again try to find stillness. Once we find the pose, try not to fidget so as to not distract the mind. in and release. Go shake up the shoulders a little bit. So do it one more round of Bhakti Stasana. If you know variations, you can go ahead this time. So come back into your plank. And you can do this modified one as always go to your right first on your left hand. Plant the left hand a little bit to the right in front of the nose, then you slide plank or slide the right towards back. As you're doing this, you're turning on your left foot. Push your left leg in a little bit. Make sure the inside edge foot is down and push your pelvis all the way up. Imagine trying to get your knee over your toes and then here you have a better uh, position to take the right foot up off the ground. Again, you can touch the knee. Again, you can even reach for the foot to extend the right leg. Try not to bend your left leg too much, otherwise it might sink you. your hips down. And again, it makes you feel heavy, so it's harder to sustain the pose. Good. Now, release. Bring the right foot back down, and then come back. Turn on the foot, come back to plank. Go on the other side. On the right hand, right foot, go to your left. Any expression you like. Visualize in your mind, use your breath to take carry you into the pose with grace and beauty. Slide the left toes back, spin on the hands. Push the left foot. In. Make sure you're not turning the foot, left, right foot too much. Toes roughly in the same line as the rest of the leg. Push your hips all the way up. And then see if you can get your weight off your left foot so you can take it up. Catch the knee. Catch the foot eventually. Make sure you're not dropping into your shoulder. You can also, from here, 
go away to Udi Demiras and turn on the right hand. You know that one? Go ahead. The all those far of imagination so clear, close to your brother's imagination. Now we're going to come back. Spin the right hand, spin the right foot. Keep your hips high and come back into downward facing dog. From here, I'm moving right into jump forward or walk forward. Come into a squat. Push the knees out. Um, the hands come between your wrists, come together between your elbows. Push your knees out. From here, plant your hands down. Go back a little bit. And just anchor your insides of your legs against uh, the glassy arms, the knees close to the shoulders. Lift your heels up. Bring weight forward so your shoulders are over the fingertips. And from here, keep pressing your weight into your, your legs against your arms. So you can hold your back and take your toes off the mat, take your toes away. If you know other expressions, you can do butt half the mat. If you're more uh, advanced, you can bring your knees into your armpits and lean forward. Try to get your, your feet up, your shins up off your arms. If it's too much, you take your feet off the ground, just stay. If your, your, your toes on the ground, but just keep coming forward, from forward, from forward. Push into the back, your, um, keep pressing your knees against your shoulders and vice versa. Lean into your arms a little bit. Eventually, you hold your breath and you can maybe take your toes, even just one toe at a time. If you're still in a pose, like your chin in, if you feel comfortable, bring your forehead on the ground and come right into teddy bear. You can stay here, you can keep moving higher and higher into your headstand. Don't stay too long. If you headstand, come back down, stay a few seconds. If you can, land your leg back on your arm slowly with control. Hold your breath, bend your toes back, flex your feet, take your head up off the ground. Back into Katasana and back down. Good. Shake out your hands a little bit. Good. All right, so from here, lift your seat right up. Then uh, bring one leg up here. As Dharma likes to do, he likes to do lots of handstand practicing. So we can try, you can use a wall if you like. You can use, um, you can use um, a chair or a wall. So you bring seats against the wall. Make sure you're, um, and then from here, you can just come with your elbows underneath your shoulders and then lift your seat up off the ground. Bring one foot on the chair and then see if you can bring one foot back. This is not the best um, solution, but you can stay here the whole time. You can try the hips over your shoulders. But you can see if you can press up off the chair. If you don't need a chair, don't use a chair. Put your hands down. Your hands not too far from the feet, just a little bit from the toes. You can even just push your heel up off the ground. You don't even have to lift your foot up off the ground. Get used to just trying to bring more weight into your hands, your shoulders over the wrists, and press firmly at the base of the fingers, the base of the toes, and push your foot behind you. You can see you can take a few jumps. Eventually, let go of the body balance. If your arms strong, imagine holding newspapers underneath your arms. The easiest way to balance is keep your legs close to the body, bend your legs very much so that, um, and then one foot behind, one foot in front, you just balance, pushing the base of the toes. Okay. One more try. Angry determination to stick his bones in the arms of Grandma likes to say. So try again one more time. Push off the knees to your toes. Maybe try on the other foot sometimes. And see if you can come up. Bend your toes. Back. See if you can flex your feet. Engage your muscles that you need to stay strong in the pose. And then come back down. 
Let's take a rest in child's pose for a moment. Forehead down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now standing on the head, king of the poses. After headstand, after handstand, this might seem easy actually. So for the headstand, you can do the same way. If you know how to get into headstand, go ahead. You don't have to wait for me. If you want to do it on a chair or a wall, you place your feet at the base of the chair or the wall. Make sure your elbows are underneath the shoulders, close to the knees, just in front of the knees, a few inches. And then don't move your elbows. Bring your hands forward, interlace them. Place your head between your palms. You're squeezing the sides of the head with your palms. Make sure your elbows are not out to the side too much. No more than shoulder width apart. One foot then comes on a wall, either on a wall or your foot is on the wall, or your toes on the base of the chair, on the seat of the chair. Bring one leg back again. Push into the forearms to take more weight into the arms so it's not all on the head. This is only the beginning. Eventually you'll be able to put more weight on the head. And then you just play pull toes away from the seat or the wall and find the balance. Those of you who are more comfortable can come into whatever motion you like. Straight up or go to stay for another minute or so. Take your attention when you're ready, when you find the pose to the space between the eyebrows, leave the body alone. In every pose, you try to merge with the divine within the pose. with control always. Bend at the hips if you're all the way up. Come down one leg at a time, you have more control. If you have more control, bring your seat back behind your head a little bit so that you can come down softly. Try not to land for a big crash landing. Come into child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out when you're all fatigued. And now, I'm going to come up, sit to one side, bring your legs in front, move to the front of the mat, roll back into shoulder stand. Just lay on the top of the mat, so you need to take a few rolls to get momentum you can. Legs come up, maybe after three time or so, legs come up, bring your hands onto your back, and then push onto your seat so your feet go behind the head more easily and stay there. If your feet don't touch down, keep your hands on the back. And then here we're moving from the shoulders stand, so your seat is over your shoulders. Bring your hands behind your back, join them together. The hands, try to move your arms all the way back behind your body so you can't see them in front. Your elbows come close together, your wrists together. And then you place your hands on your back, but moving your elbows. And then one leg at a time if you like. You may stretch out that leading leg first so that your other leg can come up to join it. And then you find a straight line from your toes to the chin. Close your eyes. Go again. Yell the body and mind and emotions. Take your attention to the space between the eyebrows. If you have a lotus, you can go ahead and do the lotus, not half lotus, the full lotus. Bring your legs a little bit towards you to get the feet in place. Use your hands if you need to, to bring the feet. If you're in lotus, also you try to get your knees high and hips. You can take your hands onto your thighs if you like. Push your hips forward. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go but deeper within beyond the body and mind and emotions. These are not you. Everything that you perceive is not you. You are beyond form, beyond time, beyond death. You are mutable, eternal, just like God. You are true nature. Without changing your focus, come into flow. If you have a 
Buddhists can go into Pinda and bring the flowers against the body, the lotus against your body, and you can wrap your arms around your legs. Don't have them in the feet. You don't have a lotus? Cloud balls. Or Karnavida. Bring the flowers against your body if you like, and even inside the head. Maybe even just eventually come onto the ground and become your shoulders. If this is too much, you can do the half the happy baby, you can do happy baby pose. You can just come onto your back and just hold on to other people's feet and bring knees down on either side of the body. So this is modification if you need. Pose, your hands come behind the back, your palms down. As your seat comes down, keep your legs close to the body so that you come down gradually. And your hands move closer together, the spine tilts, and the index fingers touching. And once the seat lands on the wrists, keep bringing your legs down. Stop when you're halfway down. And once you're there, hold them there, charge your legs. Push into your elbows, lift your back up off the ground. Now from here, pull your elbows in a little bit closer towards one another. Push your chest up, shoulders go back, the head comes down. Fish pose. If this is too much, you bring your legs down, all the way to the ground. If you want to go into flying fish, take your hands up from underneath, bring your hands together in front of your legs at the same angle as the legs. Now breathe very fast and nose like a sucking dog. down close to your seat. If you are ready to do so, Udhva Dhanirasana or Aldo Udhva Dhanirasana, take your fingertips on either side of the head, fingers spread, fingers pointing away. Lift your seat up off the ground, pushing your fingertips and bring your head further in, closer to your seat. Turn your hands around at this point, your fingers facing towards the feet, your fingers slightly turned out a little bit, it's not too much. You can stay with your head on the ground, or take your head off the ground. Urdhva Dhanirasana, upward facing bow. From here you can do whatever you like. If this is too much, you can come into bridge. Your back of the head stays on the mat. Come onto your shoulders. Your just your shoulders top still stay on the mat. You lift your hips up off your seat up off the ground. Try to get your chest. It ends up looking like a wall right against your chin. And your shins are vertical. So this is a bridge pose. If you are an Urdhva Dhanirasana, do whatever you're used to doing here in this pose. So you can take one hand up onto the left thigh, and then the other hand, of course, maybe one leg up, and then the other, just practice moving, shifting the weight. Or maybe eventually you can take the opposite hand as the leg gets up, come onto your fingertips. And of course you do the other side. Stay a little bit longer in the pose, angle determination. And then come down. Relax. On your back, imagine you Take a deep breath in, charge the body, bringing the best of best into the spine and bring it all the way up to the crown. Exhale, send it everywhere throughout. Feel the charge, feel the joint. Now from here, bring your right leg up. If you need to slide your left foot in, you can. So ankle grasp here, then move back a little bit. So from here, you bring your hands to the ankle, you bring your knee onto the shoulder and you push, uh, you pull on the leg so the leg comes closer to the head. You try to straighten the leg as much as possible. If you can, you can extend your left leg flat on the ground. If you're very flexible, you can take your foot all the way to the ground beside you. 
then you leave under the armpit, your foot comes just beside your head, a little bit behind. And then the right knee, half happy baby pose. Bring the knee, uh, the, the shin in line with the knee, the shin vertical, so heel in line with the back of the knee. You can stay here, you can bring your leg across the chest if you like. Use the left hand to hold the foot, or you can bring it to the crook of the left arm, the right elbow just underneath the line of the knee, and pull the shin right onto your chest. Supine pigeon. This is all, we need all preparations. If you'd like to try to get your leg behind your head, of course, if you're flexible, you can go ahead. Bring the leg back to the half happy baby pose, push your right knee in front of the shoulder, you can bring your left knee up towards your body as well, your shoulder. Lift your back up off the ground, your shoulders. Push the foot back behind your head, pull to the left. And you can get your foot maybe in front of your head. Just keep wiggling a little bit. Use all these little tricks to help you. To eventually extend your left leg all the way forward. I'm going to try the other side now. Bring your left leg up. Slide the right foot in if you need to. Bring your knee to the shoulder and pull on the foot. Try to get your foot closer to the head bit by bit. And then you can extend the right leg if you like. Again, if you're flexible, bring the foot right down beside you. Uh, on the other side of the body. or bend your left knee, half happy baby pose. So of course, according to your condition as always, you take the foot across the chest into the right hand or receive it in the crook of the arm, left elbow comes up just a little bit underneath the line of the knee. You're trying to pull the shin up so the shin's right across the top of your chest, close to the collarbone. Bring your left knee up closer to the shoulder and then this is preparing you to bring your leg more easily behind your head when you go back into child, uh, not child pose, but half happy baby. You bring your left shoulder in front of the knee and you push into the back knee so the knee comes up higher, close to the left ear. You bring the right knee in as well towards the shoulder. You lift your head up off the ground, your shoulders, and then you push the foot, keep pushing and you push into the back of the knee. Your foot goes further behind the head. Tuck your chin in, pull towards the right, and then eventually the foot might go behind the head. Not important. The poses, the sense of poses, pose postures have nothing to do with self realization. Be observed, but you do these forms if you're going with the intention of offering the posture and experiencing everything through the form, seeing all the different manifestations of God. That's what cultivates compassion, which is what you need to attain self-realization. So in other words, do the posture through consciousness, not just as a benefit of your own body. For all of us, now release the pose, breathe in, breathe out. position. Good. Then now cross your ankles, come onto your knees, and then come up. Keep your knees about hip width apart here. Bend the toes under. Rabbit pose. Bring your hands on your seat. Push your seat pull down. And if you want, you can lean back a few times. Try to work your core a little bit. If you feel comfortable, next time you lean back. Shoulders behind your feet. Bring your right hand onto your right heel, left hand on the left heel, and bring your heels together, cross the baby fingers. Push your hips all the way forward. Heels are gonna fall on your thighs. Rapid pose, take your head all the way back. If it's too much, keep your hands on your seat. Keep more upright. Your hips come onto your knees, pull your elbows towards another, and just comfortably lift your chest as high as you can. Take the head back. Up. 
onto your seats. You should just sit, pull down, come back up. Go ahead and in front of your knees. Inhale, arch back. Exhale, round the back leg like an angry cat hissing. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Good. Now from here, come back up one more time. Either the same pose or camel. Bend this eye just flat your toes. Hands on the feet. You can lean back again if you like. Hands on the feet this time. The soles of the feet if you're doing the camel. Otherwise, you can't reach. You can stay here in rapid pose or your hands on your seat. If you're very bent and flexible, you can take your arms back. Go ahead and edge them back. Work towards Kapotasana. Hands on the ground, eventually you walk hands back until you can find your toes and bring your elbows down. Good luck getting you closer and closer until you can take over the heels, maybe even, and come down. Roll the core into your belly with your toes. As the next five instruments, you know what to do. And when you come out, you either lie in the guard, so if you're on Kapitasana, or if you know how to get up, push into your fingertips, charge your legs, and come back up. Again, core into your belly. From here, thighs, uh, your chest, your belly on your thighs, child's pose, step on the back. Roll your way up, bring your feet in front, right leg over the left, the foot on the outside of the shin, right arm behind the back, left arm up. Push into the outside of the right thigh, inhale, push your lower back in. Not leaning back like this, this is not doing anything for you. Keep your back straight and then turn towards your right. Try to pull the knee beyond the right edge. Lift the left edge of the body. Visualize the spine turning. See, imagine you can see right through your skin that the skin, that the spine spiraling upwards. You can use your imagination to attain this like you're trying to achieve. Go back to the other side. Uh, to the middle, then to the other side. Left arm, um, left arm behind the back, the right leg extended, left from the outside of the right shin, not too close to, the foot should be beyond the knee. Make sure your back stays straight, your chest open, clenching, get your chin beyond, uh, just over the left shoulder. Push your lower back up and in. Always lie down on the back. Shavasana. Again, softly, low, big, heavy, hard landings. Land softly. And once you're on the ground, let go of all efforts. Let the feet to fall away from one another. One another, arms go beyond the edges of the mat, palms facing up. Like you're making a gesture of receiving. You just surrender the physical body completely to relaxation. Surrender mentally as well. Let go of all the barriers that prevent you from fully embracing this moment. And it's here in a practice where the benefits further integrate. Imagine the best of best is coming to you now. From all around, imagine it's coming like great beams of light and energy flooding you from all directions, going right into the pores of the skin and coming at such strong force that pushes everything you don't need that doesn't serve you in any way out of the body, any form of negativity. And as you make room for more of the benefits, the grace to come in, Imagine this coming from all beings around you are doing the same thing. And even those beings who push your buttons sometimes, be grateful for them too, for they are the ones who you have to really work at trying to 
find the compassion to love them unconditionally regardless of what they do. Remember that we were there once before we all passed through suffering, the same amount of suffering. And at any given moment, eh, countless things are being born. So they don't yet have the knowledge to know the right comportment. Continue to pray for them, continue to set a good example for them so that they can see how the good behavior attracts good karma, good outcomes, good circumstances, and then they will be motivated perhaps to follow your lead. Say to yourself the following sentence three times to ingrain this intention firmly in your mind and heart. Come back to every day and see its realization more and more. I see God in all the forms. Say that to yourself now mentally three times. And when you go back to your day-to-day -day life, try to exercise that in all your interactions. The practice does not stop when you leave the mat. It continues. Now prepare to come back into from Shavasana into seated position. Move in a way that is gentle, that is mindful, that is quiet. We close the practice with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. In still the peace within, send out to all beings everywhere. Om Shanti 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 Be receptive to the grace of God All is within Namaste Thank you so much for joining Have a wonderful day Much love Hope to see you soon